Yes, we're so glad that you've joined us this morning. Whether you're gathering on your own or whether you've started to invite others to gather around as our restrictions ease. Uh, however you find yourself this morning, we are connected as one body. We are the church and we gather and I greet you in the name of our God, whose Father, Son and Holy Spirit and who's able to transcend technology and space and, and gather us together as his body this morning. As we go through today's service, can I encourage you to lean in to the, the prayers and the worship as they happen. It's very easy to sit back and, and uh, as if we're ready to change the channel, uh, maybe to, uh, to be at a distance. But as we always encourage you, as, as God speaks to you through this, lift your hearts, engage and worship. And if you're finding in yourselves in a place where that's difficult right now, we'll start with this song. Blessed be your name. Let's lift our hearts and our voices wherever we find ourselves today. Let's sing. about him. That's why we gather today. Well, while many activities in the life of the church have been on hold for a little while and, and may still be for some time yet, there's still a few notices to share with you each week to remind you to continue to engage and be active in the life of our church 
and in community. Let's see what we've got this week. You can find account details for your weekly tithes and offerings using the giving button or on the giving section of our church website. If you found these online services particularly helpful, prayerfully consider who you can invite or share this service with from the comfort of their home. If you have a specific prayer request, you can click on the prayer request button or email us. This will be passed into a group who pray for the weekly needs or to our prayer team. Hey kids, after the service, you'll find Sunday school and kids church activities using the activities page of our website. Grab a coffee and join our Zoom link up at 11am each Sunday. If you've set up a Zoom on your computer or device, you can join us by clicking on the link that will be provided in the chat section of the church online page or in the email this week. Not on our weekly email list? Email minister at achunga.ucasa.org.au and we'd love to keep you in the loop. Contact details are also on our website. We're going to sing a song that you will know, but we've added a little chorus and I will teach you the actions, the signs for that first, and then I'll teach you the melody. So it goes like this. I will not fear for you are with me. I'll trust in your amazing, and then grace is like this, grace to your heart. Okay. Right, and the tune goes like this. I will not fear for you are with me. I'll trust in your amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that sings.
Well, if you're like me this week, the words of that song will be going around in your head. It's the beauty of music that it reminds us of those truths, even if they uh, keep rolling and rolling around and uh, offer some encouragement. So let's give thanks to God that we don't need to fear for his amazing grace and for so many other things that we can be thankful for today. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are an amazing God who has shown amazing grace to us through the life, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Unmerited favour, undeserved. We don't need to fear or worry. You are with us and we thank you for the truths of that song. We thank you that you give and you take away and even though we feel the pain of that at times, that you are good that you, uh, your ways are not our ways, so we trust you. We thank you for the blessing of the changing of seasons, for the rain that fills our tanks and our dams and refreshes the land. We thank you for the warmth of our homes and our fires and of the company that surrounds us, for the ability to get out and do things again. We thank you, God, for this church community, and in a moment of silence, we, we just bring to you from our hearts the things that we are thankful for today. Thank you, Jesus. And as we come, we confess to you our sin. Those things from this morning, from this week. We thank you we can come to you at any time. We don't need to bear these burdens. But we confess our sin to you and we thank you that by your grace, that gift, we are free. Take them, help us turn from those things. Thank you that as we do, we stand forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, for all you are, for all you've done and all you'll continue to do. Amen. Let's be reminded of the story of that grace as we lift our hearts through this song to the King of Kings.
It's my job to lead prayers this morning. Um, I uh, find that um, the place that I feel closest to God is often when I'm out in nature. Um, some people feel closest to God in a church. Um, I uh, am one of these people that uh, feels closest to God when I'm in nature. And so I wanted to record this uh, outside um, uh, ahead of the service time, but uh, I'm actually recording it at night. And um, so what I've done is I've taken a photo during the day and uh, I've got that as my background. So what you can see behind me is a, one of our Granny Smith apple trees. And the thing about an apple tree is that you can see uh, on the wood and you can see the moss growing and you can see that it's some of the, the branches are quite weathered and twisted. You can see that it's protected by a bird net. Um, and I actually took this photo last week, but if uh, if you looked again this week, then um, you would notice that there's almost no leaves left on the tree now. The, the rain over the weekend is, and the wind has is, is, uh, knocked off most of the leaves. And so what remains is just this fruit that remains on the tree. And for me, the thing about a Granny Smith apple tree is you get um, really good yields, lots of fruit, and the fruit's good for you know, lots of things. Probably uh, one of my favourite foods is, uh, is apple pie. Um, but uh, the thing about the fruit on a Granny Smith tree is it hangs on for a long time. And so even as the tree goes through different stages of life, whether it be the you know, budding, new leaves, new life, growth, flowering, um, fertilisation, um, and then the fruit is initiated and then the leaves actually where there, there's still fruit. But the thing about a Granny Smith is that that fruit hangs on and it actually becomes sweeter and sweeter. And so um, it's, you know, right in the depths of winter when the things are darkest and there's almost no fruit on the other trees, that the Granny Smiths just come into their own. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think it's perhaps like that in life, that as uh, we think about some of the older people in our congregation, um, that there's just really sweet fruit that they can still bear and still um, contribute to uh, our uh, life in our congregation. And, and maybe even in dark times and maybe in times of isolation, you know, maybe that's when the fruit even becomes sweeter. And uh, so as we think uh, about that as, um, uh, as an example for life, um, then uh, maybe uh, let's uh, uh, come uh, before God. Great Father God, we um, thank you for your creation and uh, for um, the many examples of you that we see in your in creation. Lord, we thank you that you've created each one of us as unique and special beings. Lord, we uh, think of um, some of the prayer needs that have been raised 
uh, among our congregation uh, in the last week or so. We think of uh, the Trim's grandson, um, Samuel Scott, and uh, Rosalie's dad, who is also Judah's uncle, um, Uncle Jeff, uh, who's uh, had a heart attack and in hospital. We'll pray that you'll be with them. And there's other people that we've been praying for, like Raylene and Mick and Diane and Rosemary. Um, for David Lewis, we pray for the um, burns that uh, that will heal. Um, think of uh, some senior people in our congregation who uh, have been through some really tough times, like Betty and David, and uh, and uh, my dad John. Thank you for when their health improves, and uh, Lord, we pray that uh, you will be um, be with each of them, and uh, also with the people who are caring for them. Lord, we think of those who are grieving like Brian and, and others and uh, we just uh, pray that you will comfort them. Lord, we think of uh, what's happening in our country and in our state as things are easing up, the COVID restrictions. And Lord, we ask that uh, you will um, guide us in uh, knowing how best to act and how best to be responsible in thinking about uh, how to... Um, be warm to people, but also to be uh, sensible and careful. Lord, we think of the um, Black Lives Matter uh, riots that are going on. And we think, Lord, if we see um, people in rural communities in uh, outback South Australia and Northern Territory and other places, and Lord, uh, the, the desperation uh, that we feel in, in uh, not knowing how to help, even not outback places, just in parks in the city, Lord. Um, you think of uh, groups of, uh, of black people who um, uh, have a sense of hopelessness and that leading to um, substance abuse and then that leading to other problems. Lord, we um, just ask that you will guide us in knowing how to respond to these matters. Lord, we ask that you will guide us in knowing how to um, affect public policy for these things, how to be able to care for individuals, how to be able to um, take a stance without um, necessarily uh, adopting the mob mentality that uh, um, may or may not be helpful. Lord, we ask that you will forgive us for being apathetic. We pray, Lord, that you will guide us in knowing how best as individuals and as a Christian community to be able to deal with these matters. But we think of those in, in different seasons of life and we thank you for our young children in our congregation. We thank you for um, Michelle and the work that she does among the kids and um, just uh, for how special that's been during this time of lockdown. We pray that uh, you'll be with, uh, with Seth and Aubrey and their family. But we think of the... Uh, of uh, Matt and Beck and their family and their kids. And uh, we praise you for uh, new pets and for you know great times with kids growing up and enjoying family life. And uh, we just uh, pray a, a blessing over them and their family, their home. And uh, Lord, we um, uh, think of uh, the teenagers, we think of um, people going through uh, year 12 at the moment, um, people like Erin and uh, I think Caleb and uh, others who are at school and, and um, that may be struggling with um, uh, exams and learning differently and, and yeah, Lord, we just ask that you'll be with them. And our young adults, Lord, uh, we pray that you'll guide them in making good decisions. We um, ask, Lord, that they will not take the blessings of being raised in Christian homes for granted, but that they will um, choose to be able to pass on that blessing to their children by um, choosing to follow you as their personal Lord and Saviour. And Lord, uh, for those who are um, parents and uh, middle-aged, uh, Lord, we pray that uh, you'll guide us. We pray that you'll guide us in individual decisions that we make each day and each week, that we won't just coast through life, but that we will be living a purposeful life. We pray that you will guide us in our workplaces 
and that uh, the people that we work with will see that uh, um, being a follower of you is something that uh, uh, that is desirable and uh, adds richness to life. Lord, we people, pray for people who are out of work. We think of Martin and, and others who are out of work and just ask that you'll um, comfort them and guide them and protect them and um, yeah, care for them. And Lord, we just uh, feel for people who are out of work and, and just uh, yeah, ask the, that you um, just be with them and with their families. And so, Lord, whatever stage of life we're at, we just are reminded of um, the reading in Galatians 5, and that's about the fruits of the Spirit. And so, Lord, we ask that in each of us that uh, we'll just take the time this morning to think about those fruits. We ask, Lord, that you will produce in us love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and self-control. And so, Lord, we uh, thank you for all that you have done. We ask that your spirit will rest among us as individuals and will guide us. Lord, we um, pray these things in and through Jesus' name. Amen. G'day, everyone. The Bible reading for today comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 to 12. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises for, of him who call you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you, as foreigners and exiles, to abstain from sinful, des sinful desires, which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans, that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. It's a letter from Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the province of the Adelaide Hills and beyond, Groot Island, Harndorf, Mylor, Ichanga, Mount Barker, those who've been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even through refined, though refined by fire, 
may result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Okay, so this wasn't delivered by Australia Post, but it is the words of Peter to the churches of modern day Turkey. One Peter, they were the opening words of that book and you'll find that in the Bible. It was written to a church in a, a very different time and a very different place to our own, but dealing with the same issues that some of us, uh, many of us, are dealing with today in different ways. The chapter opens, reminding us that we are shielded by God's power through our faith. What an incredible promise. It calls us to be holy, setting our hope on the grace of of Jesus Christ. But it also reminds us as that, that first chapter goes on that we are to see ourselves here as an only a temporary measure measure. That we are here as foreigners. And this passage at the end of it, it reminds us that all people are like grass. Grass that whiz, withers is gone one day and go, and back the next. But the word of God endures forever. Grass. This is an important truth to grasp for us today, just as it was for the churches that Peter was writing to. This world is not our home. We lose sight of that so easily because for us, it's all we see. It's important to grasp this truth because it affects the way that we live, the way that we live and the way that we grow. I've shared this before, but a few years ago, readers of the journal Discipleship were asked to rank their top areas of spiritual challenge. That is the areas that challenge their growth in their walk with God. Number one on that list, number one challenge to their growth was materialism. We're surrounded by stuff. We're told every day that there is something more that we could have. There's a new development in technology or something that's brighter and shinier. Something to make life easier and more comfortable. And, and although we know better, we often can give in to those things very easily. And materialism here, these readers identified, was a huge barrier to their growth in God because we simply get too comfortable. Number four on their list was laziness. Now we're all prone to, uh, to, to sit back and, and relax at times. We need to rest. But laziness, it's often tied up with all our material stuff, our desire for comfort and what we're continually fed that we need to think of me and comfort. Number seven on the list of spiritual growth barriers was gluttony. The, the over-consuming of food and stuff. Of course, if that's our focus, we, are, uh, we, we just get lazy. It, it all's tied together, isn't it? These are barriers and, and these things are barriers to our spiritual growth. We are materialistic or lazy or gluttonous because we enjoy what we have too much. It's not that we can't enjoy this beautiful world. God has given it to us. We're to be blessed and, and, and be filled with joy, but to love it more than our relationship with God, that is where we become, we run into problems. There's a Melbourne band called Compliments of Gus, and they wrote a song a few years ago called la di da and one of the, the verses says this, it says, So today I'm a fisher of men, and someday soon I'll watch TV till when. Oh, it's not working for me. So wake me when I'm needed and I'll take on the world. But right now though I'm leaning to trading in my wisdom 
for a remote. A simple truth and reality that perhaps many of us find ourselves in. This, this sense that we're called to something more, but yet the drawing to the things around us that we can see and taste and touch, that bring us comfort and can become a distraction. Jesus was quite clear about this. In John 17, verse 13, he's praying. And he says that I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they will have the full measure of my joy within them. And in verse 16, he says, They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. He's talking of the disciples and then goes on to pray for all believers. Not of the world, just as Jesus is not of it. Is that how you see yourself? As someone who's not of the world? We live here. We can't avoid it. But Jesus calls our focus to be wider and broader, as does Peter, as he encourages the church to put their eyes where it matters. Peter's letter goes on in chapter 2, and you can read that. Caleb's read some of, us to, some of that to us today. Peter reminds us to rid ourselves of the muck and the sin in our life and to crave pure spiritual milk. Another example of that image. Remember, not sugared or coffee milk, just pure spiritual milk. And in doing so, we will grow to maturity. We're told here in this passage to keep our focus and our foundation where it should be. And that is on Christ, who is a living stone. And we will be built into a spiritual house around him as the cornerstone. We're reminded that that cornerstone was rejected and will cause many to stumble and fall. But it's on him and around him that we build our lives. In verse 9, we're reminded that we're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, God's special possession. Those words mean something. They mean that you're not here on earth just to go about and enjoy and all the spoils of it. Yes, do that, but remember who you are, a chosen people, a royal priesthood. God's special possession. Why? It goes on to say it's that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. This story that you are living, this life that you are living, there is one main character and it is him. Christ, our cornerstone, and God the Father, the Creator. He called you, he made you, he gave you all that you are. We are his people and we should be declaring the praises of him who has done so much for us. We are not here to enjoy the spoils and look no different to everyone else. We're here to sing his praises and to point to him. Verse 11 makes this even clearer. It says, Dear friends, I urge you, as foreigners and exiles. Hear that? Foreigners and exiles. This is not our home. And as foreigners and exiles, abstain from sinful desires which war, wage war against your soul. He's saying, resist those temptations. Not just to go and hit someone or the things that are obvious sin, but the temptations that stop us from growing in our faith, that stop us being the light, that cause us to choose the remote over changing his world. Verse 12 says, Live such good lives among the pagans that, though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits. Got another letter here. And in the middle of talking about uh, the high calling of staying single, 
These are the words of Paul to the church in Corinth. He says, what I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not. Those who mourn, as if they do not. Those who are happy, as if they were not. Those who buy something, as if it were not theirs to keep. Those who use the things of this world, as if not engrossed in them. For this world in its present form is passing away. We know that, don't we? But do we live as if this, this day could be our last? Do we live as if the things around us will just become dust and that we can't take it with us? Or to become so consumed with the things around us and the comforts, waiting for that day that we lose sight of what really matters? And the reality is we get a lot of other mail, don't we? Things in our mailbox, in the newspaper, between every program on TV, we're told what we don't have and what we need. So we so easily can become materialistic, gluttonous, and lose sight of what really matters. As Jesus is teaching in Matthew 6, verse 19, he says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So where is your heart today? Where is your treasure? It's countercultural, isn't it? Especially as we're sitting here in the comfort of our lounge rooms, enjoying technology that costs money. It's countercultural. And Jesus doesn't say that we shouldn't have any of this stuff. Let me make that clear. But it's where our treasure is that matters. Are we living the life that he's called us to live? Have we thrown off everything that hinders, including our love for things that get in the way? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It's helpful to know that Peter in his passage also addresses the idea of suffering. And I know that many people, although we can't compare to the suffering of places around the world, we go through our own battles and suffering, and some of you are in that right now. Things that cloud us, things that challenge us. Well, this was no different for the people in their own way that Paul, Peter was writing to. In verse 16, he encourages us to live as free people. But in the same section, he also reminds us to live as God's slaves. Our call and our purpose to be children of the light, to be uh, built around the cornerstone that was rejected, was never going to be easy. Verse 20 tells us to suffer for good. And reminds us that Christ suffered for us. We should expect suffering. Jesus never said it would be easy. And he himself went to the cross. The joy is coming. As we're driving through the streets, we've been looking around at all of the trees in winter that now look as though they're dead. The leaves have fallen off. The beauty of the green and then the, the golden and brown is starting to disappear completely. The trees look like they're ready to be pulled out. But if we look close enough to what seems dead, we see life, little buds forming that in, in maybe a few weeks or months time will, will burst forth into flowers and shoots and leaves again. Winter may be here, but spring is coming. 
We don't understand the ways of God. It's as if we're just a baby in the womb trying to understand the world and we don't understand what's going on. We see only such a small part, yet God sees the bigger picture. He knows us and is with us in our suffering. And we're not alone. So hold on. This is only a temporary thing. There are greater things to come. Back to Jesus' prayer in John 17. As he prayed for them and told them that they are not of this world, he prays and says in verse 18, As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. There's a sense that we are not of this world. We know that. But we are sent into it. Just as Jesus was sent to become one of us, to walk with us, to cry and suffer with us, we are sent into this world too, as his body today. To suffer as he suffered. To love as he loved. We are sent into the world but we're not to be of it. It's a difficult balance. How do we resist the comforts and getting caught up in that and grow and flourish and be effective, but still be sent? We're all in this, and may God help us to live this way. 2 Peter 3, verse 10 to 12. It says, that, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God. And speed, it's coming. This world is not our home. It's only temporary. These things will pass away like grass comes and goes. So in the meantime, live holy and godly lives. Let's set our feet on the rock, Christ the cornerstone. Let's throw off everything that hindered and seek only Our next song is a prayer and an opportunity for you and for me, for each of us, to surrender those things that have been consuming us. To fix our eyes on the things that matter the most. You might be familiar with Dami Im, who was on X Factor and Eurovision. She's a beautiful singer. Well, she's prepared this version of the song and I invite you to, uh, to listen, uh, but also to sing and, and make it a prayer. I surrender all. Let's give it to him. All to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust
Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are good. We thank you for what's to come. And as we enjoy this life and all that it brings, we pray that we would keep our eyes fixed on you. That we would not love it more than we love you. That we would not let it hinder our shining of light to our world. We let go of our grasp on the things that we own, that we think are ours, which are yours to begin with. And we give to you our all, including our money that's been given today and this week to support your work of this church and across this state and across this world. We pray that as we give that, that that money will be used for your glory. You give wisdom wherever it goes. We surrender all. May you be glorified in and through our lives. Amen. As we've been reading 1 Peter, a blessing from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. So to him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to seek and serve him today.